Hello everyone, welcome back to Healing School. Our topic tonight is on divine healing. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we thank you that, that your word is available to us for so many things, for anything that pertains to life and godliness. And tonight in particular, we are looking into your word regarding divine healing. So, Father, we just thank you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that even as we share the scriptures tonight, that your healing power would be available to all those who will accept your healing power by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to welcome any of our visitors. I'm going to give a shout out to our Living Faith family. Hey, Living Faith, good to be with you. All right, well, tonight is, as I said, it's healing school. So tonight's topic, I'm going to be preaching on sickness and disease, sharing with you the word of God. Sickness and disease, don't own it. Sickness and disease, don't own it. We're not to own sickness and disease. That sickness and disease is never something that we want to get comfortable with. We never want to own it. We want to resist it at all costs. It doesn't matter what reports say. It doesn't matter what our body is screaming at us. We never want to own sickness or disease. Now, we all get attacked. Matter of fact, yesterday, I was attacked in my body, and I call it an attack, actually, because uh, Satan comes, John 10, 10 says that Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when sickness attacks our body, it's something that's coming to steal and rob from us, amen, and sometimes even kill us. So again, that's something that we don't want to own. We don't want to own sickness and disease. But anyway, yesterday I felt a little sluggish. I woke up, got a cup of coffee, went back to bed, and um, just, you know, just relaxed for a while. But then after, you know, two, three hours, um, you know, I started to say, okay, Connie, now you're going to have to start practicing what you preach, all right? You can't just lay up in here and uh, do nothing. And so then, I, of course, I began to lay hands on myself and speak the word of God over my body. And today I'm, I'm fine, um, but we all uh, get attacked with sickness and disease, some more violent than others. Um, yesterday wasn't violent for me, but it was just enough to zap my energy and so we need to stay encouraged and to never settle for it, never, never own it. The word own, it means to, it means that something belongs to you. When you own something, it means that you take possession of it. So again, as far as sickness and disease, we don't want to take possession of it. It, it, I don't care what the doctor's report says. Again, I don't care what your body is shouting and screaming at you, the pain screaming at you, the, the symptoms are screaming at you, the runny nose is screaming at you, the sore throat is screaming at you. Sickness and disease is never something that we want to take possession of. You know, God has called us to a life of resistance, not resistant to him. You know, a lot of Christians they're more resistant to God and to the things of God and to the plans and purposes of God and to the voice of God when really our lifestyles to be resistant to anything that the enemy brings our way. We are to be resistant. The, the Bible says to, res, to resist the devil and he will flee. Now, I take it personal. Sin came into uh, uh, mankind. Of course, Adam and Eve, they accepted uh, what the, the plan of the enemy, they could have resisted him. They could have told him what God said and to get out of, get, get out of here, get out of our face. No, we're not doing that. But instead they, they uh, gave into the enemy and, and ultimately they disobeyed God. But we are, we are to resist the enemy. We are to resist anything that is not the promise of God. I want to make this, um, statement faith begins where the will of God is known you may have heard that before again faith begins where the will of God is known so it's up to us therefore it's up to us to find out what God says about divine healing about divine health what God says about sickness and disease amen because we 
can't exercise our faith unless we know what the will of God is. The, the word is full, especially the Gospels. The Gospels where Jesus went around healing and uh, delivering people. Uh, 1 John 5 and verses 14 and 15, it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And so it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith cannot begin until the will of God is known in that area. That's why I preach on healing every month, at least once every month, because we faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me just remind you of a couple things. Sickness, we can define, divide, define sickness, uh, any malfunction, abnormality, or weakness. That's any malfunction, is anything malfunctioning in your body? Is anything abnormal in your body? Abnormally small, abnormally large. If anything that's suppo supposed to be functioning the way God created it to function, if it's malfunctioning, it's not functioning properly, that's a sickness. If it's abnormal, that's a sickness. If it's weak, where something is not as strong as it's supposed to be, for instance, an immune system. Now, our immune system is supposed to be strong. God gave us an immune system, which is our best line of defense. But like I said, we don't always eat the things that we should. We don't always confess the word of God over our bodies as we should. But our immune, our God-given immune system, God knows about sickness and disease. He knows that, that there's sickness, there's sin in this earth, even though Jesus took care of it, right? He took the power of sin away from us. Therefore, he took the power of sickness and disease away from us. So anything that's malfunctioning, anything that's abnormal, or anything that is weak in our soul, our body, or our spirit is considered sickness and disease. Amen? So, so you know, in case you didn't know, if something's malfunctioning, to say it ain't right. It's not right. Amen? So we don't want to own anything that's malfunctioning. We don't want to own anything that's causing our bodies to be abnormal or our minds to be abnormal or our mind, soul, and body, and spirit to be weak. We don't want to accept those things. We don't want to own those things. I want to, uh, you know, uh, once in a while, I hear people in, you know, who are in their 60s or over 60, and they make jokes about being old. They make jokes about their memory. They make jokes about their... Uh, uh, their their joints, they make jokes about their energy or what they can do, and we shouldn't do that. You shouldn't make jokes about your age, right? It's it's not funny, and so we you know we we don't want to make old people jokes. First of all, it discourages you, discourages your mind, and because your body listens to you, then it discourages your body. Amen. And it discourages other people. Anybody, when you, if you sit around making old jokes all the time, oh, that's, you know, um, I, I can't remember because, you know, cause my, because of my mind now, you know, I'm, I'm over this age or that age. Those aren't funny jokes to me. And it discourages people who are younger than us. It discourages them. It's like, wow, is that what I have to look forward to when I get older? No, no. So stop making those old people jokes, all right? Because again, your body does listen to you. And so life and death are in the power of our tongue. Divine healing is when the divine power of God comes into those same areas. When the divine power of God comes in, especially the human body, when divine power comes into our bodies to kick out all signs and symptoms of sickness and disease. Let me repeat that. Divine healing is when the divine power of God, and I'm, I'm praying that the divine power of God uh, uh, reaches through. Now, of course, the power of God doesn't have to reach through this 
my iPad. I'm using my iPad. The power of God is available wherever faith is. Wherever faith comes, that's where the power of God is. So I pray that as you hear the word of God tonight, that you receive faith to receive healing for something in your body. It, uh, it's when the divine power of God comes into the human soul or body kicking out. It kicks it out. The divine power of God, the healing power of God comes into your body and kicks sickness and disease out. It kicks it out. It evicts it. Amen. Divine healing. It also includes delivering people who have uh, demonic oppression in their lives. We're supposed to be, as believers, we're supposed to be casting out devils. The woman who, who was um, uh, bowed over with a spirit of infirmity, that thing needed to be kicked out of her body. Uh, a lot of families have inherited diseases. Well, we need to kick that thing out. We need to cast that inherited spirit out of our house, out of our genes, out of our bodies. Amen. We need to kick it out and we receive healing that way as well. We receive healing by laying hands on the sick so that they can recover. We can receive healing by laying hands on ourselves. This is our right. This is, this is something that has been given to us. Divine healing belongs to us. I also want to make this statement that sickness and disease, they are limited death. Sickness and disease is limited death. Even if it didn't come to kill you, it is a form of death. Sin brought death into this life. Sin brought sickness and disease into the earth. So sickness and disease is a limited form of death. Some of it ultimately leads to death. But anytime that we get sick, that's not normal. That's, that's something's malfunctioning. Something's weak. It's not right. And so, and so we should deal with it. We need to deal with it. Amen. Uh, again, it might not kill you, but it's, it's robbing you of a full life. How many of you know the sickness and disease? It, it takes stuff away from you. It takes away your mobility. It takes away your peace. It takes away your joy. Um, it takes away your independence. That's, that's stealing and robbing from us. Again, saint comes to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come. I've gotten rid of, rid of the power of death, the power of sin. So therefore, I've gotten rid of the power in the believer's life. Jesus got rid of the power of sickness and disease. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 3, where it says that the, it talks about the benefits of God. And it says who uh, that we should not, David was saying, uh, um, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities? Nobody has a problem. Well, some people do. But we need to know as believers that we've been forgiven of all of our iniquities. All of them. All of them. Past, present, and future. Right? So when we... Even when it comes to sin in the future, which praise God, that's tomorrow <laughs> or, or tonight, um, there's still repentance available. There's still healing available. There's still cleansing uh, of all unrighteousness available to us. Amen. But we're not to forget any of his benefits who forgives all of our iniquities and who what? Who heals all of our diseases. Psalm 103 and verse 3. He heals all of our diseases, past, present, and anything else that can come up in, in our future. Amen. They're always coming up, you know, every time they, they name tornadoes when they come up. They name hurricanes. Same thing with sickness and disease. Some new disease is discovered and they give it a name, right? They give it a name. That's why it's so important for us to know that Jesus, which G, the name of Jesus that we have access to, 
his name is above all those other names. His name is above Hurricane Ida. His name is above arthritis. His name is above Epstein-Barr. His name is above any of these diseases and sicknesses that could ever be created. Amen. And that's powerful. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Amen. Isaiah 53 and verse 1, it says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Amen. You know, when it comes to sickness and disease, uh, it, how many of you have, have ever had a test taken or uh, some type of test? or uh, And then they come back and they say, ma'am, you have this, ma'am, you have that. Uh, you, you have a, a, a brain tumor or you have an ulcer or you have this or you have that. So that is a report, but have many of you ever heard the saying, there's two sides to every story. So I want to, what I want to tell you tonight is there's two sides to our health and, and wholeness and healing. There's one, there, there's a report that comes from the medical community. There's a report that comes from the signs and symptoms in our bodies. There's a report that comes, as I said, from our ancestors, you know, uh, um, so we should never get to a point where uh, we own, we don't even, we're not even supposed to own inherited diseases. Just because our, our parents and our grandparents and our great great grandparents had a particular sickness or disease, that's, we don't have to own that. We can be delivered from that because we have by the blood of Jesus and by his stripes, or we can own it. We can say, oh yeah, that runs in my family. Ah, uh, no, that's, that's owning it. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But it says, who has believed our report? The Amplified version of Isaiah 53, 1, it says, who has believed, confidently trusted in, relied on, and adhered to our message of salvation? And to whom, if not us, has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now, typically in the word of God, the arm of the Lord is talking about his power. Tonight, we're talking about the healing power of God, divine power, power that comes from the Holy Spirit, power that comes from heaven, power that only comes from God, divine healing, the only healing that can actually kick out sickness and disease and you after that you can't even find where it ever existed hallelujah can somebody say praise the lord romans 10 and verse 16 what was was referring back to isaiah 53 it says but not all of them welcomed the good news look i'm telling you tonight we need to welcome the good news we need to know that healing and uh, that divine healing is a part of the gospel. It's part of the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we need to, uh, we need to believe in that. A report, let me talk about, uh, give you the definition of report. The, the word report there, it means news. Hey, ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, I got news for you. God wants you healed. He wants you healed. How do, how do I know he wants you healed? Because he already said in Psalm 103, I, I have healed you of all your diseases. Any disease that can come against you, we've already been healed of it. But we have to believe that we receive that divine healing by faith. That word report, it means news. It means tidings. It means something heard. Amen? It means an announcement. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all, by Jesus stripes, you are healed. I'm announcing it tonight. By Jesus stripes, you are healed from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. That word reported also means doctrine, right? So we're, we're learning about the word of God. Every, every last Wednesday of the month, we're learning about divine healing. What has been given to us? What is part of our God-given covenant, our covenant with God to walk in divine health. It also means fame. The Bible says that the fame of Jesus went abroad. They were hearing. What was his fame about? They were hearing about how he was getting people 
uh, he was uh, getting people healed. He, blind people were getting healed. Lame people were getting healed. He was casting out devils. People were getting delivered from, from uh, being possessed by devils. That was something, that was a word, and that was a report that had to get out. You couldn't stop that report. Amen? We have to get to the point in the body of Christ where we can, when we function so much uh, in in divine healing, that that rumor, that fame is going to go out from your house, from my house, from our church, that Jesus still heals. Amen? So who is going to believe God's report? Uh, let's see. Uh, in, in Matthew chapter 1, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 11 in verse 1 through 5, uh, let, me, let me read that. Matthew 11 in chapter 1, Matthew 11, verses 1 through 5. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Matthew 11, let's see. I'm turning, I'm turning. Matthew 11, and verses 1 through 5. And it says, Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John, this is John the Baptist, when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? This is John the Baptist, the one who said, behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. But since John ended up in jail, I guess when you end up in jail, you start to doubt that Jesus is who he really says he is because we could think, well, why, why am I in jail? You know, <laughs> if Jesus was Lord, I don't, I shouldn't be in jail. So anyway, he said and said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. What did, what did they hear and see? Verse five, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. L listen to that. So Jesus, if you want to know what the will of God is, let, we can look at Jesus. Look at what Jesus did. Listen to what Jesus said. And in this case, he's reminding John, look, John, don't doubt because you're imprisoned, right? Don't doubt because you're in bondage right now. Look, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear. Look, all these things are still available to us. He says, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. That's what Jesus said. That is the good news of the gospel. So when sickness and disease attacks us, we don't own it. I didn't say we don't do anything. I just said we don't own it. Um, again, back to perhaps re, uh, receiving a report from the doctor. Well, we still have to, uh, we acknowledge, I mean, we, we acknowledge the report from the doctor and I'm not saying totally ignore it, but that's not something that we focus on. As a matter of fact, a report from the doctor can let us know, okay, what we're dealing with. When we know what we're dealing with, if we have a heart issue or a lung issue or a kidney issue, then we know what to believe God for. We know how to focus our faith on that particular condition. Amen. We can also get information. It, it, it's not like um, it's not like we don't consider um, doing anything other than believing the word of God, but believing the word of God for our healing. It's got to be the primary thing. It's got to be the primary thing. I think I've mentioned to you at least once or twice that sometimes people get hit with sickness and disease that, that the person just doesn't have enough time to receive faith for that particular thing, right? All of a sudden they get hit with um, stage four this. They get hit with that, that they're going to die. I, I shared with you a story about a woman named Lachey. They told her she was going to die in 30 days. Well, it, it ended up being a good ending for Lachey because she locked herself up with the word of God and she stood on it and she didn't own the sickness or disease. She said, no, look, 
so she took all the verses that she could find on divine healing and she put her name, she inserted her name in those uh, scriptures. And that woman got healed. When she went back to the doctor in 30 days, they said they couldn't find anything. Amen. So we know that the word of God, which sometimes is hard for believers to believe, that the word of God, as Proverbs 4 says, that the word of God is life to those that find it. What does that mean, find? That, that comes as a result of searching. We have to look at the word of God. We have to read the word of God. We have to search out the scriptures on divine healing, right? Right? We don't just do nothing. Uh, it, it, it's the word of God that's life to us. We can take supplements. We can uh, drink more water. We can do this. We can do that. And it's good to do those things. But the word of God has to be your primary, your primary line of defense. All right. So, um, you know, for, for instance, if, if you got a test from the doctor and of course I'm not saying doctors are evil, I'm just comparing a, a diagnosis of, of sickness and disease, especially something that's chronic or something that is deadly. Well, but compared to the word of God or compared to the report of the Lord that says by Jesus stripes, you've been, you're healed. By and the word of the Lord, the report of the Lord is, no, don't worry about it. I've healed you of all your diseases. Amen. That's, that's one of God, just one of God's great benefits. But when you compare the two reports, that's an evil report, right? The doctor's report is an evil report. Why? Because that's the one that, um, is, uh, for lack of a better word, the evil report is the one that's dooming us, the, the one that is marking us, uh, the one that is trying to prophesy to us. And instead, we need to prophesy the word of God over our bodies. Amen. Uh, for instance, if you got an evil report and the doctor said that you have, let's say, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, quite a few people have that. I've heard that bone broth actually heals that, if anybody's listening and anybody cares. Bone broth has a very healing effect on uh, anyone with uh, irritable bowel syndrome. I mean, all this stuff is available. There are plenty of doctors on YouTube now. They're not quacks. They're just willing. They found that they can make money sharing their information and sharing their expertise on YouTube. Uh, of course, you want to search the person out and read comments and things like that. But we have so much information available to us. But still, even though we can drink bone broth and, and avoid certain, um, you know, a person with IBS, apparently they're not supposed to eat things like broccoli and cauliflower, things that kind of rough up your system to keep you regular, you know, in, a, in, a, in normal or regular normal circumstances. But the word of God still has to be your first line of defense, your first line of defense. And so, um, uh, let me see, I'm um, just reading my notes here. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. So, uh, again, I say that, that we get attacked and attack comes to take something from you. It comes to steal from you an evil report from the doctor. If you're, if you're not ready, if you're not focused, if you're not focused on the word of God, it, it comes to steal, it comes to destroy, it comes to break you down. Uh, it comes to break your health down. Um, and so you may be listening to me tonight and you've, you've uh, received an evil report that you have sickle cell anemia. Uh, maybe you suffer from migraines. Maybe you have back issues. Maybe you suffer from dizziness. Maybe you suffer from achy joints, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes. There are just, uh, these things are not normal. These things are not normal. Again, back to my title tonight, sickness and disease don't own it. For instance, when symptoms come, when symptoms come, how many of you heard somebody say, when symptoms come, let's say our nose starts running, let's say we start sneezing, our eyes get watery. Uh, what we don't want to do, we don't want to say, I'm catching a cold or I'm catching the flu, right? 
We don't say things like that. When we say things like that, we defeat ourselves. We defeat ourselves. That is taking ownership. That is taking possession of that thing. So we don't, we don't want to ignore, totally ignore things, symptoms in our bodies, but but we don't we definitely don't want to own it. We don't want to take possession of it. So that means even though the a report has been given to us, we never claim it as our own. Again, back to something inherited in your family. You don't say, "Oh yeah, that runs in my family." Well, so that's owning it. That's we don't want to do that. We don't ever want to own it. That um that um um uh, what is it when when it's the opposite of defending yourself? It it um it, it takes away your line of defense. It it causes you when we own sickness or disease, then we let down our guard. We start to let things in. We start to study and and find out oh what other symptoms are are, are coming because of this sickness. You know we start to own it, and when we own something, that means we're going to keep it. When we own something, we keep it. So we don't want to own sickness and disease. We always want to fight against it. We always want to resist anything that is not the blessing of God. Amen. Matthew 8, 17, uh, it says that, that Jesus himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Look, so if he took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses, then that's something then, then, so then when those things come against us, when infirmities attack our bodies, when sicknesses attack our bodies, that is something that we want to actively, uh, resist. We, and to resist something means to stand against it. It, it means to, um, it means to refute it. It means to, to go it to go against it. We don't we don't go with the flow of sickness and disease. We go against it. We stand against it. We take our position against it. We can say it what Matthew 8 17 says that Jesus himself took, he took my infirmities. And no, no sickness, no disease. Jesus himself bare my sicknesses. He took my infirmities and he bare my sicknesses. So that means I don't have to took them and I don't have to bear them right? That word took, it means to take up a thing, to be carried. Jesus himself carried our sicknesses and our infirmities, which means sicknesses, sicknesses, it can also mean weaknesses. He took, he took them up to be carried. That implies that he took them off of us by faith because of the blood of Jesus and the salvation that has been given to us he took that thing. He took our sickness and disease. He took it up to be so that he could carry it, our infirmities, and he bare our sicknesses. That word bear uh, is the word bestazo. It mean, it's, it's to carry uh, on one's person, to carry on one's person. And it, it's with the idea of removal. Listen to me. Listen to me. So that means Jesus himself. Why do we resist sickness and disease? Because that's something that Jesus already took upon himself to carry for you and for me. Sickness and disease and weaknesses is something that Jesus already carried in his own person. So in order to pick, take it up and carry it away from us, if somebody takes something from us, we no longer have it. Amen? Amen. So we want to resist sickness and de disease with everything in us. We don't want to own it. Never, never. We never want to own sickness and disease. Never. We never want to possess it. We never want to take it as our own. We never want to settle for it. We never want to be comfortable. We should never stop. We should never stop fighting the good fight of faith. We should never stop standing on the scriptures as far as sickness and disease. I don't care how many years it takes. We never, ever want to own something that Jesus Christ himself bled, suffered, was beaten for. We don't want to let what he did, the, the, the suffering that he bore, 
for us, that should give us reason enough to not uh, own sickness and disease. It's no longer ours. Sickness and disease has already been taken care of. It's already been taken care of. Amen. So, but if we don't know uh, um, or we don't believe or have faith in that, um, then it won't benefit us. The scriptures, again, faith begins where the will of God is known. So we need to know that Jesus carried everything, every sickness, everything that could come against us. He carried it for us already. He, he did he did it ahead of time. He did it ahead of time so that when it comes, how many of you know Jesus knows everything? He's all-knowing. He knew us since before the foundation of the world. So that means when we, when we are attacked with anything in our bodies, Jesus, he's already made provision for it. It, 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 it can I say it ain't no thing. It's, it's, it's already, our healing has already been bought and paid for. Hallelujah. So when we're attacked with sickness or disease, we cannot own it. We can't make it ours. We can't take possession of it. For instance, I, I have an example here. Suppose a delivery person brought a package to your door, right? And, and you were home. The delivery person rang the doorbell, said, ma'am, this is a package for you. And the package said, clearly said on the box, it said bomb. <laughs> well, for, uh, did you order a bomb? No, <laughs> I, I don't think you ordered a bomb. But as he tries to deliver that package, and it's the package clearly marked, maybe it's clearly marked with arthritis. Now, I use a bomb as an example of his mark, bomb and clothes, bomb, B-O-M-B. -B. And he said, that's not my package. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. You're not going to accept that package, right? Because first of all, you didn't order it, right? Second of all, it's not going to help you. Third of all, it's, third of all, it's not a blessing, right? It's not, it's just, it's just not something that you want, but the enemy can come. And uh, so what do you do? So you reject that pack. You say, no uh, postman, you take that thing back. That does not belong to me. I don't receive it. It's not coming into my house. It's not coming to my house. I, I don't want it. I don't want it. It's not something that I want. So you just take it back. Right? So, um, so we can imagine the same thing. Uh, you get a package and you get a report from the doctor and says you have have arthritis. You have you have this. You have a um, you have a, a a weak heart. You have um, poor kidneys. Uh, and again, I'm not saying you don't do anything in these circumstances. You do what you can in the natural, but you don't. You just don't accept it. You just say you you just don't take a report lying down. <laughs> you know. Uh, you have to fight against it. You have to stand against it. You have to resist it. So uh, we, we don't want to own any of these things. Uh, you know, we could, we could get signs and symptoms. You know, there's different, I think there's two, two uh, times of, this, uh, of the year that people are used to allergies. Well, they, then they start saying, oh, yeah, my, you know, uh, oh, no, it's allergy season or uh, yeah, my, my allergies, they're going to start flaring up again. That is owning that. You've already owned it. First of all, it's not yours unless you own it, right? If you don't own something, you need to be saying, you need, that, you need to take that back. That's not mine. So it's those statements like that, my allergies. Oh, I'm get coming down with this. Oh, I've got that. That is owning that thing. You never say that. You you never say that. You're setting yourself up for failure. And you could be setting yourself up for something more serious. So we have to attack sickness and de disease whenever it comes. We don't own it. We don't get comfortable with it. We're to resist it. Sickness and disease is not your portion. It's not my portion. It is not the blessings of God. Amen. Sickness is, has been taken care of. Sickness has been taken care of. Well, I'm, I'm running out of time and I want, I want to pray with, um, some of you again. Um, you know, you can own things by, uh, you know, accepting something that runs in your family. No, that thing can stop with you. That can stop with you. Amen. So it doesn't have to run in your family. 
or even if it did previously run in your family, it doesn't have to run in you. That's something that you can resist and that you can believe God for, for your healing. Amen. So we want to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 103 again says that God has forgiven all of our iniquities. He's healed all of our diseases. That means every single one of them, every sickness, every disease, inherited or not inherited, expected or not expected. We've been healed ahead of time of, of, of every single one. Amen. Our responses to evil reports, to reports from the doctor, it should always uh, be, I've received a report from the doctors that says I have this or that, but instead I believe the report of the Lord. And I'm going to see the arm of God, which is the power of God operating in my life to kick out all signs and symptoms of sickness and disease. Amen. And so as we, as we hear the word of God concerning uh, divine healing, we talked about how Jesus went about. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus uh, of Nazareth with uh, the Holy Ghost and with power who went about, about healing uh, doing good and healing all that were pressed of the devil because God was with him. Amen. That's one of the scriptures that we can stand on. Jesus went about, if you want to know the will of God, we talked about faith can only begin where the will of God is known. We know the will of, we can know the will of God by watching Jesus. Amen. We have to look and see what he did. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. Are you oppressed of the devil tonight? Then you, you have a right to healing, to divine healing right now in the name of Jesus. This standing against sickness and not owning it, this takes constant practice and determination, everybody. We can't take any of this lying down, even if you're lying down. And I, by lying down, I mean in the bed. Maybe you're in the bed right now watching this video, but you don't have to take any of this lying down, anybody. No, you resist it. You resist it in faith. You said, this does not belong to me by Jesus stripes. I'm healed. You know, yesterday I had to, when I, when I was laying around for a while, I guess I was tired, just needed some extra, extra rest anyway from the weekend. But then I began to lay hands on my stomach and I said, you know, stomach, I, I speak peace to you right now in the name of Jesus. I curse any bacteria, any bacteria, any virus that may be lurking in my digestive system. I curse you right now in the name of Jesus. Stomach, I call you healed. I call you settled in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing from Whatever's attacking my body right now in the name of Jesus. So this is what we do. So even as you're laying in bed, this is what you do. This is what you say. Amen. And so we, we, don't, we, we don't take any of these things lying down. Amen. And when we renew our minds with the word of God, now you need, in order to increase your faith, read the gospels, read and see what Jesus healed. You know, he healed uh, hard cases. Amen. He wasn't just going around healing, healing colds and flu. He was healing people with missing limbs. Uh, you know, he was healing people that were crooked. You know, he healed the woman who was bowed over. She was bowed over, had to look at the ground as she walked. He was healing all kinds of things, right? So, uh, and, and as far as God is concerned, there is no level of sickness and disease is wrong. Wrong is wrong. Sickness and disease is wrong. There's, there's no levels with God. He took care of them all from minor sicknesses to major sicknesses that are trying to kill you. Amen. So, uh, let's pray. I want to pray and, um, you know, I want you to actively, uh, um, sit there as you're sitting there or lying there. I want you to actively lay hands on yourself. Amen. As we pray, as we pray. So father, right now we stir up our faith right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that in Psalm 103, it says that you healed us of all our 
diseases. So it doesn't care. It doesn't matter what the name of the disease is, what the name of the condition is. You healed it, and you healed it before we got sick. You healed it before we are we were attacked with this sickness or disease. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, as we lay hands on the specific parts of our bodies. Maybe you have the flu right now. Lay hands on yourself. In the name of Jesus, I call you fully recovered from the flu right now. In the name of Jesus, flu virus, you come out of all the cells, all of the cells in that person's body right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray over stomach problems. In the name of Jesus, as you lay hands on your stomach, I rebuke stomach problems and stomach issues right now. In Jesus' name, I rebuke IBS. I rebuke um, uh, I rebuke um, stomach viruses. I rebuke um, s- stomach cancer. I rebuke intestinal cancer right now in the name of Jesus. Lay hands on yourself. Stomach cancer, intestinal cancer, I cast you out right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your divine power, your healing power coming into those bodies right now to kick out every sign and symptom of sickness and disease under the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. I, I, I rebuke migraines right now in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on your head. I rebuke migraine headaches right now in the name of Jesus. Migraines, you are not normal. Even though you've been with me for years, you are not normal. And I do. I no longer own you, migraines, in the Jesus in Jesus name. You're not my. You're not my migraines anymore. I rebuke and I resist migraines right now in the name of Jesus. And, and I rebuke the source of those migraines in Jesus name. Whatever is abnormal, whichever whatever is malfunctioning or weak, causing migraines, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I strip you of all of your power in Jesus' name. If you're if you're having back problems, lay hands on your back right now. Whatever it is, even if I don't pray over it. If you have back problems right now, lay hands on your back. In the name of Jesus, back and back problems, I rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. I command that back to be healed. I command that back to be straight. I command those ligaments, uh, muscles and tendons and discs to be healed, anything that's ruptured, anything that is um, that is herniated, I speak healing to those backs right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your healing power coming and kicking those things out. I call that spine straight and perfect. I rebuke all pain associated with it, inflammation associated with it. I rebuke inflammation in every body that is listening under the sound of my voice. I rebuke inflammation right now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke all pain, body pain, from the top of your head to the tips of your toes right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Just say, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray right now for female and male malfunctions and abnormalities. Lay hands on your reproductive uh, um, reproductive organs, uh, ladies and gentlemen. In the name of Jesus, I curse any female malfunctions in the female uh, reproductive organs right now in the name of Jesus. I curse uterine growth. I curse fibroids. I curse cancer right now in the name of Jesus. I curse prostate cancer in Jesus' name. I curse prostate problems and malfunctionings and weaknesses and abnormalities right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we have a right to healthy uh, uh, reproductive uh, organs, even if we're, we don't plan on having any more children or planning ha- having children at all. We, we want to just be healed and whole right now in the name of Jesus. Just lay hands on yourself right now in Jesus' name and believe you receive your healing. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, again, any other sicknesses and diseases that exist tonight, in people's bodies, whoever's going to hear this video, Father, I pray that your healing power would show up, would show up, first of all, that faith would come 
as your people heard the word tonight regarding sickness and disease, and that, they, that as faith comes, that they would receive it and that they would release their faith. Again, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Whatever you believe in God for tonight, say, thank you, Jesus. I receive my healing right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, uh, lastly, Father, I pray that as your word says that, God, that you would confirm your word, that you would confirm healings tonight with uh, doctor's reports and with, uh, and with the, um, the disappearance of all the signs and symptoms that swellings would go down, that pain would disappear. But, Father, I pray that in the cases of, of tests, Father, that you would confirm your word with doctor's tests, the follow-ups that, that your people have been healed of these sickness and diseases right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are loving God, that you're a good God, and you want us walking in freedom, and you don't want us to be slaves to sickness and disease, malfunctions, abnormalities, or weaknesses in our, in our soul, in our bodies, nor in our spirits. And so, Father, we believe we receive our wholeness and our wellness right now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm excited. I'm excited. Just continue to believe God. Believe God. Even after after uh, we're, we, we part on this video, after this video is over, um, you know, you continue to believe God that you received your healing tonight by faith in Jesus' name. Sickness and disease, don't own it. It's no longer yours. Don't take possession of it. You don't want to own it. Send that package back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, it's time for tithes and offerings. I want to spend a couple moments on tithes and offerings in case um, uh, you want to worship the Lord tonight. In your tithes and offerings, of course, there are three ways to give. There's three ways to give to uh, this ministry, to Living Faith Christian Center. You can give by going online to lfccnj.com forward slash giving. You can also give by texting LFCC NJ to 77977. You can also uh, mail in your tithes and offerings to 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey, 08110. And as you're, as you're doing that, uh, remember to subscribe and hit notification so that you're notified of, of these videos when they go up. Amen. Again, I would encourage you to listen to this video over and over again until you receive your healing or any of the videos on healing. I want to share with you in the word of God, if you're uh, presenting God with the tide tonight with Malachi chapter three, and it, and, and it says, um, it says uh, in verse seven, yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Verse eight, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And he said, God says, in tithes and offerings. He says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now we know that Jesus, in Galatians 3.13, that Jesus became a curse for us. Amen? But in, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, God says, I call heaven and earth to record this day. Uh, there's blessing and cursing. Um, there's... Um, there's a uh, blessing and cursing. <laughs> what, what is the other thing? There's blessing and cursing and, uh, and life and death. And he said, but choose life. And he's saying, choose blessing. And so uh, our lives can be affected by the curse. Um, and so when, when we're disobedient, God said that we have to choose. That's a constant choosing. We constantly choose whether we want to walk in the blessing or walk in the curse. And it says, yet, yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven 
and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, I want to focus on this a little bit. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, uh, uh, and it says, And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. We are not finished. We're not finished tithing. We're not finished bring, bringing offerings until somebody is saying that we are a delightsome land, that our life is blessed, amen, and that people can look at us and see that we are blessed, that, that we walk in delight, that we walk in the joy of the Lord. And God says that he himself will rebuke the devourer. So anything, devourer was often compared to locusts and caterpillars. And so those things come to eat up our crop and to eat up the labor of our hands. God said that he would rebuke those things. He would rebuke the enemy from causing things to break down in our families. You know, uh, constantly have our car break down unless you just need to believe God for a car. But if you like that car, then you can believe God that that car keeps running. But anything that will come to rob us and to steal our money from us and, uh, you know, crazy types of repairs and different things like that and uh, uh, things that we put our hand to and it looks like it's not blessed. Look, uh, that's the time that we remind God, God, I'm a tither. I'm an offerer. I bring offerings. I honor you with the 10 percent, which is what tithe means. It means a tenth. So God, you said, I remind you of your word, and you said you would rebuke the devourer from eating up my stuff. So at any signs where it looks like the enemy, that devourer is trying to eat up your stuff, that even eat up your life, and uh, in, in reference to tonight, when the enemy, when the devourer looks like he's coming to eat up your health, to eat up your body even, there are, there are some diseases that come to actually eat up your flesh, these nasty flesh-eating diseases, that is the devil. That is not our portion. We, no, no, no. And so God, so we remind God of his word. God, it looks like the enemy's messing in my stuff. I remind you, God, you said you rebuked the devourer for my sakes, my sake. And I declare that I'm a delightsome land in Jesus' name. Well, Father, we just thank you. We praise you. Father, we thank you that right now that you rebuke the devourer for our sakes, that um, that we are blessed and not cursed, that uh, people call us blessed. Father, we thank you that where we sow, we reap a harvest. We present you with the tithe is holy and unto you. So, Father, we give this to you. This is yours. We're not, we're not tithe robbers. We're not God robbers. We present you with the tithe. It belongs to you. It's holy. We have not touched it. We have not spent it. We have not worn it. We have not eaten it. We have not lent it out. We have not given it to somebody else. This is yours. And so, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be with you in the word, everybody. And until next time, I call you blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied because God already made it that way. Bye-bye. See you later.